Hey guys, it's Rajat Das from Techie Geek, and I've been testing this thing from three days on my Android One, as it received the update same time as Nexus did, and here is a complete review of the much-awaited Android Marshmallow. So the first comes appearance. The first thing you'll probably notice about Marshmallow is a redesigned home screen. The Google search bar, a permanent fixture above widgets, folders, and pins, features the colorful new Google logo. A swipe to the left reveals a revamped Google Now interface, and a tapping on six-dot circular icon above the home button brings up overhauled app drawer. Marshmallow's app drawer, unlike the drawer in every Android version prior to 3.0 Honeycomb. Scrolls vertically instead of horizontally. It's a lengthy, alphabetically organized list of every installed app, but navigation is made easier by the right-handed scroll, scroll bar that identifies section of the drawer by letter. A new search bar in the top row assists to starting at typing, and it it'll narrow down the list of possible apps. It's even more imbued searches with a little predictive intelligence, talking in account search variables as a time of day. App usage and app frequently launched together. App permissions. Apps are handled with a little differently in Marshmallow. Android permissions management has fundamentally changed. Instead of requiring you to approve apps to personal data, you can choose your in which information you'd like to keep private on a per app basis. Furthermore, the previously lengthy list of Android permissions had been significantly pared down. The esoteric read phone status and identity in Android versions of your for instance, falls under a new and much more comprehensible phone permissions umbrella. Permissions are a lot more flexible now too. You allow or deny apps to your phone's data and hardware. So if you choose, if you decide you want to grant Google Maps access to your location, after all, the toggle's only a hop away. You can also enact blanket policies to prevent all apps from accessing certain items like contacts or the camera. Now comes the Google Now on Tap feature. So Now on Tap is perhaps the most intriguing feature of Marshmallow. It's essentially artificial intelligence that interprets with what your phones or tablet screen to provide, constantly revealing the results. As an example, a mention of black mask in a text message will yield a Google Now esque card to containing Scott Cooper film title and links to appropriate page within apps, a fixture page and a YouTube trailer. A search of the Rolling Stones will bring up the rock group Facebook page. Now on tap capabilities extend beyond the textual. Ask certain questions verbally and now on tap will attempt to derive the answer. Navigate there will start turn by turn directions to any visible address. Asking what's his real name with a picture of Skrylex on screen will yield the appropriate answer. Sony John Moore if you are curious. Google made a serious attempt at minimalizing Android's impact on battery last year with Project Volta, an optimization initiative which saw the introduction of battery stack tracker and a new hibernation modes. But Doze, a new feature of Marshmallow, is wider ranging. Unlike Project Volta, Doze is targeted at a very particular battery draining scenario. Those extended periods of time of your phone sitting on a desk or table unused. Android's previous behavior was to allow power sucking background processing, but Marshmallow is a bit less judicious. After checking the accelerometer to ensure the device isn't on your person, those shuts down connectivity and notifications. Conclusion I am fairly content with the state of the platform as of now. However, I feel like Marshmallow could have been more and more awesome if some of the hinted features from the developers' previews were actually included in the final release. You know what we are talking about, multi-window and the night UI theme of course. This is just sneak picking and merely a couple of minor grips would have most probably made the platform even more appealing to a vast user base. Maybe in Android 7.0? Eh Google? As a whole, there's little not to like about the newest Android version on the block. It's polished, doesn't suffer from any major issues, no memory leak, potentially prolongs the time you can spend away from your charger and feels way more mature than Lollipop. All of these are paired with the regular arsenal and unrivaled features of the Android that offers. Frankly, I'm in love with the combination. So guys, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. So please hit the like button and do comment if you have any queries. And please, please, please subscribe my channel for more videos like this. So to my next video, you better be in peace.